quadratic functions. What are quadratics? Quadratics are the things that we were factoring last, uh, yeah, last semester, last nine weeks. We were ended up uh, with uh, solving quadratics by factoring uh, that sort of thing. Uh, quadratic functions look like this. Uh, f of x is just another name for y. It's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. A, if I say the, if I say what's a for this problem, I'm always talking about the number that's in front of x squared. If I say b, I'm always talking about the number that's in front of plane x, and c is always the constant on the end. So a, b, and c, always those pieces of the quadratic. So uh, that's what we're going to deal with. Now, what we're building up to is the graph of a quadratic, actually building a graph. And a quadratic equation, the graph is called a parabola. P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A -A. Parabola. And what it looks like is that shape. Or it can turn upside down like that. Okay. So there's some important pieces to those quadratic graphs. And we're going to find three of those today. Uh, one of those pieces is the axis of symmetry. And an axis of symmetry. Josh Butler, report to the office. All right, so an axis of symmetry in math uh, or any, in art or anything, an axis of symmetry is a place that you can fold something and it match up perfectly, okay? So like you've got your hands and so they're the exact same size. Right where they meet, that's where the axis of symmetry is. And when you fold them together, they match up, right? So with the quadratic, an axis of symmetry is going to be this dotted line that goes right down the middle of those graphs. And that's the axis of symmetry. And what we're going to find today, one of the things we're going to find, is the equation that makes that dotted line. The parabola shape, the equation that makes it, is this quadratic right here. The axis of symmetry, there's an equation that, that goes that. So we're going to find the equation for the axis of symmetry. We're also going to find the vertex. And the vertex of a parabola is the lowest point or the highest point of that? When you look at those graphs, where's the lowest point on the one on the left? At the bottom. That's exactly right. It's down here at the bottom. It's this point right there. And on the one on the right, the vertex would be up at the top. Notice the axis of symmetry goes right through that point every single time. It always does that. That is a Every single time it's a quadratic, quadratic equation, quadratic function, it's going to do that. The vertex and the axis of symmetry are going to line up like that every time. Okay, So what we're going to find are these three things. One is the axis of symmetry, S-Y-M-M-E-T-R-Y. -E Number two is the vertex, and that's going to be an ordered pair, x, y. The axis of symmetry is going to be this equation, x equals some number. The formula for that comes from the quadratic equation. You take negative b divided by 2a. Okay? Negative b divided by 2a. b is always in front of what? Uh, Without scrolling up so you can see it. B is always in front of X. A is always in front of X squared. Okay? So those two numbers there. Now the vertex is this ordered pair. It's that point that I've drawn in the blue dot right there. The vertex, the X value of the vertex, is always going to line up with the x value that the axis of symmetry is. So the x value of the vertex is going to be negative b over 2a. So if we can find the axis of symmetry, we get half of the vertex for free. Okay, so it's all interrelated. The y value of that vertex is going to be what, what we get when we plug this number in. So this is going to work out to be a number. We're going to plug it into the equation f of negative b over 2a. That means plug that in and work it out. We're going to do some examples of this so that it's not, you know, just foreign to you. Okay? 
So the vertex is an ordered pair, X value, Y value, okay? The third thing that we're going to find, and this is the easiest one, is whether that's a maximum or minimum. That vertex can be a maximum or minimum. If it's a maximum, where do you think it's at? Maximums are where? At the top. Which picture has a top? The second one on the right. It has a maximum. The one on the left has a minimum. It's got a lowest point to it, right? Okay. The maximum or minimum is decided by what it, the value of A is. If A is greater than, excuse me, if A is less than zero, it's going to be a maximum. Less than zero is what kind of number? It's negative. If A, the number in front of X squared is negative, you're going to have a maximum. There's no calculation that you got to do to find out if it's a maximum. You just look at the number in front of X squared. If it's negative, it's a maximum. If it's positive, it's a minimum. Okay? No calculation required for that. Okay? The calculations are for the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Maximum or minimum can be what, what's in front of X squared. If it's a negative number, we got a maximum. If it's a positive number, we got a minimum. Right. So these are the three things that we're going to find today. And we're going to add to these as the week goes. Okay, so these are the three first three things that you need to find to get the graph of a quadratic. Okay, all right. Let's look at an example. Find the axis of symmetry vertex and max and we'll abbreviate those max min for that. So example A f of x is equal to Two x squared plus eight x minus five. So that's our equation. Two x squared plus eight x minus five. And we want to find the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and the whether that's a max or a min. Okay, so we're going to start with the axis of symmetry. And I'll let you abbreviate, just say axis. And then, so it's going to be x equals negative b over 2a. That's the formula you're going to use every single problem today. Okay? Negative b divided by 2a. So, negative b, what's that mean for this problem? What's b? Positive 8. Negative b would be negative 8. So you change the sign. That's, that's what that tells us to do. Divided by 2 times A. What's A? It'd be 2. So it's 2 times 2. So that ends up being negative 8 divided by 2 times 2 is 4. Hang on a second. Don't, get, don't, don't do too much here. We're just trying to find axis of symmetry right now. What's negative 8 divided by 4? Negative 2. So the axis of symmetry is the equation x equals negative 2. It's got to, you've got to write x equals negative 2. Other. Hey. The formula of this first two is always there. A is where this 2 came from. That number in front of x squared. Always going to be that. Okay. Now, Always going to write your axis of symmetry x equals then the number. Okay? Always write out that equation because it's the equation of a line. That's the reason we need the x equals in that is it the equation of a line. Okay. Now, because we did all that work, we get half of the vertex for free. So the vertex, we already know that the x value for the vertex is negative 2 because we've already done all this work. And we know that the vertex. 
the x value for it is the exact same number that you find for your axis of symmetry every single time. Never changes from that. Always going to be that way. Now, to get the y value, we've got to take negative 2 and plug it into this problem and work it out. So f of negative 2. That's what that means to do. That's function evaluation. That's taking a negative 2 and putting it in the place of x everywhere in the problem. So that's 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 minus 5. Order of operations plays a role here, just like it always does in math. Uh, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Left to right on all of those, okay? So, parentheses, well, I got an exponent on that parentheses. So, what's negative 2 squared? Four. Positive 4. Positive 4 times 2? 8. So, this is 8. What's 8 times negative 2? Negative 16, and then a minus 5. So 8 minus 16 minus 5. That's what we've got to work out. 8 minus 16 be negative 8 minus 5 be negative 13. So the y value is negative 13. Axis of symmetry, vertex. This is the hard part. This is the stuff that takes work. The max and min doesn't take any work at all. You look at A. What's A in this problem? Two. two. What all, well, A is always in front of X squared. So two, positive two is that. That's greater than zero. So that means that this parabola looks like this. So it's got a, where my thumbs come together. It's A max or a min. Minimum, because it's at the bottom, okay? So this would be a minimum. Because A is positive. If A is positive, it's going to open, the parabola shape is going to open up. If A is negative, it's going to open down. So up means there's a minimum. Down means there's a maximum. A is positive, there's a minimum. A is negative, there's a maximum. That's always what's going to happen. Okay. Let's look at another. Let's say we had f of x is equal to x squared minus 10x plus 2. Again, we're going to Find the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and whether it's a max or a minimum. Okay. So let's find the axis of symmetry first. What's the formula for that? You be over two a. Always going to be that. You need to memorize that. Alright, now, what's B in this problem? Negative 10. Negative B would make it positive 10. So we're going to put a positive 10 on top. Always change the sign. That's all you got to remember is change the sign. That's what negative B means, change the sign. Over 2 times A. What's A? What's in front of X squared? 1. That's understood to be there. If there's nothing written there, it's a 1, so it's 2 times 1 on the bottom. Okay. Well, that'd be 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 5. Okay. And then vertex, what part do we have for free? The 5, where does it go? The front, for the x value. Okay, we get that straight from here. No extra work involved. Now, how do we get the y value? 
plug it in everywhere there's an X. 5 squared, 10 times 5, uh, and then plus 2. So 5 squared is 25 minus 5 times 10 would be minus 50 plus 2. Negative or 25 minus 50 be negative 25 plus 2. Negative 25 plus 3. I mean, plus 2. Negative. You owe somebody $25 and you paid them 2. You now owe them $23. I wish that were good. All right. Ordered pair, 5, negative 23. Is that a, ma a maximum or a minimum? Why is it a minimum? A is what? Positive. If A is positive... So, I is positive one, or A is positive one, and so that's a positive number. So that means we have a minimum. So, and you can abbreviate that M I N if you want to. Max M A X. All based on A. A is positive one. So that's how we know to do that. Say so we had F of X is equal to negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 25. We're going to do the same things. We're going to find the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and max or min. The axis. Negative B over 2A is the formula. So commit that to memory. You've got to memorize that. Okay. So negative B would be what? All right. B is negative 12, so we swap the sign, so it should be positive 12 over 2 times what? Negative 2. A is negative 2 in this case. 12 divided by 2 times negative 2. 2 times negative 2 would be 4. negative 4. What's 12 divided by negative 4? Negative 3. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3. Hey. Yes. Always, no matter what b is, swap the sign. For axis of symmetry every single time. To find the axis of symmetry, always swap the sign of B. All right, so that tells us our vertex already has the X value of negative 3. How do we find the Y value? Plug it in. So everywhere there's an X in that problem, we're going to put a negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3 squared, minus 12 times negative 3. And it was minus 25. A lot of negative signs in there. Got to pay attention to details here. When I square negative 3, what do I get? Do I get negative 9 or positive 9? 
positive. Anytime I square anything, I get a positive number. So negative 3 squared is positive 9. So it's negative 2 times positive 9 minus 12 times negative 3 minus 25. So I'm just writing an extra step in there. That positive is important. So negative 2 times positive 9 be negative 18. Negative 12 times negative 3. Be a positive. What's 12 times 3? 36. Then minus 25. So negative 18 plus 36. It'd be and then we're minus 25 from that. So negative 18 plus 36 would be positive 18 minus 25. Be negative. Eighteen, you got eighteen dollars in your bank account. You pay something that's twenty-five dollars. You got negative seven dollars in your bank account. There's our vertex. At negative three, negative seven. Is that a maximum or a minimum? And be a maximum. Why? Because the this number right here is negative. That's the one that decides that. Okay. Always that number always decides that. Any questions about this? I mean, it's the same process over and over. We could do eight million of them, uh, but it's it's the same thing over and over. Commit this formula to memory. You got to know that. Okay, you're going to need that in algebra one. You're going to need that that in algebra two. We do a whole section on quadratics and stuff in that that class too. All of this stuff we're talking about here, we do again, and you're expected to know how to do once you get to algebra two. So this is, you know, fairly important stuff. You, you're going to use it again, I promise.